I just came back from Costa Rica a couple of days ago, and I really love Costa Rica. It's beautiful landscape, nice beaches, and a lot of sun. But I was most interested in the people, because the people in Costa Rica belong to the happiest people worldwide. So I asked myself, why are the people in Costa Rica more happy than, for example, the people in my home country? And now I want to do a little experiment with you. So please look in the face of your neighbor. Like, do that now. Please stay serious, so please don't smile. And look right into your eyes. <laughs> Has everybody somebody? So please stay serious. I'm, I'm honest. <laughs> so, and now, please smile. <laughs> see how great it is to smile at somebody? <laughs> and see how great it is also, if it feels really weird and a little bit strange and uncomfortable at the beginning, when you smile at somebody and you get a smile back, you instantly feel happier and you made the world a slightly better place. And this experiment I usually do when I travel around the world in every single country. It sounds a little bit weird, but it's really simple and interesting. So I usually smile at strangers when I'm in the subway, when I'm walking on the street. And when I'm doing this here, usually people look at me really confused. And some of the people think, I think she's insane. But I keep doing that. And back in Costa Rica, I smiled also to a lot of strangers. And what I've experienced is that everybody smiled back. And 70% of all people added also the phrase pura vida, which means celebrating life or live a happy life or I live a happy life. So that was really great. And this is interesting. Human happiness is usually driven by six factors. Strong economic growth, healthy life expectancy, generosity, quality relationships, trust, and the freedom to live the life that's right for you. So back in Costa Rica, I tried to talk to a lot of locals in a really bad Spanish, but they were really friendly. And then I figured out, after also reading some studies, that the most important factor or reason why the Costa Rican people are so happy is their importance of their social interaction. So social connections, family gatherings, and taking the time for happy moments and laughter with family and friends overcomes their lack of income. And they don't get into the trap of overworking, overspending, or under-socializing. And they have Wi-Fi and smartphones there everywhere. So I read a lot of happiness reports and looked at the other countries which are, for example, much better than Germany and are much more happy than Germany. And what I figured out is that social interaction is really the main factor of human beings being happy. And for that, like urbanization and digitization change the way we live today. That's clear, like we look at our smartphones, we work on a computer, and it's really challenging our daily lives. And more and more people in more and more countries feel lonely or socially disconnected. Or, for example, as a well-known professor and former TED speaker, Cherry Turkle said, we feel connected but alone. And loneliness is a growing health epidemic. So in Germany, 60% of all people feel lonely. And UK just appointed a minister for loneliness one week ago because nine million people in the UK feel lonely all the time, like really always or really often. So I want to, you to get that. So UK appointed a minister for loneliness. And loneliness also increased the risk of mental and physical health. It increases also mortality. So in other words, loneliness makes you sick. And also, According to Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, which he published in 1943 um, in his paper, A Theory of Human Motivation, it's on the third level. Like social belonging, social interaction is really, really important for our th physical needs. And so 
now you may ask yourself, and now as we know how important social interaction is, how we can we improve that? And how can we bring it to our, to our everyday life or maybe to the day after tomorrow? And we all have a special superpower in ourselves. We have this power and it makes uh, our everyday life much more easy and also creates more happy moments. And this special superpower <laughs> is our creativity. So we all are creative in ourselves. So now I want to um, so now I want you to think back when you were a child, around the age of three to six. And now think about what you did when somebody asked you to paint something on a plain paper. So, for example, I just took that plain paper, I grabbed some colors, and then I started to paint. And I was really happy in the end with my results, so I gave my paintings to it as a present to all of my families and friends. And it was no problem, so I didn't really think about it. And now keep this inner child in your mind and think about social interaction and how you made friends back to the days. I, for example, I just walked around and when I thought, okay, this person is interesting, I just asked, want to be my friend? Or I shared my lunch or I shared my favorite toys with somebody and then, bam, we were friends. So when we ask some children, and there are also some studies, and when we ask them, is social interaction a problem for you? Many children would say no. So now come back to today. I have, and now you had a little time to think about it, I have a plain canvas with me today. So who of you, and now please raise your hand, would really now start to paint something or has an idea what to paint? Some of you. But this is really interesting because as an adult, we lose our creativity and we lose kind of our imagination, which makes it a little bit harder for us to paint something. We are trapped in our daily routines and we usually f first think about, okay, what should I paint on this 10 euro canvas that maybe it's worth double the value after I painted it? Or what should I paint that everybody thinks of you? Oh, this is a nice painting. Or how should the result look like? Or we analyze, okay, should I use, which color should I use? Like, which feelings do I now have before we start to paint? And this is completely normal when we are adults. And now think about how you interact with other people nowadays and how to really make social interaction. Today, we have all channels of digitization to connect with people. We have social media, we have some apps, we have our smartphones and we are always connected. But it's really hard to get to know new people outside of work environments, isn't it? And this is also something that we are kind of used to, that it gets harder and harder to get new people. We are we're used to connect with somebody on a smartphone, but we have a fear to talk somebody directly on the street. Or for example, it's a challenge for you and it's a challenge also for everybody just to talk, talk to somebody who we do not know. And this is something now you maybe think, why is she talking about social interaction and creativity all the time? Because I want to give you the idea of how great social interaction and creativity, the connection between uh, like how great the connection between both is and how you can use your creativity as a kind of superpower in your everyday life to increase your social connections. We're trapped, as I said, in daily routines. We thus walk around and sometimes we do not really experience unexpected surprises because we plan everything. But think about not planning at some time and think about how can I do something else. For example, when you think so a girl or a guy is pretty and is walking on the street or you maybe think, oh, this person is really interesting, why not talking to them directly and saying nicely hello and start a conversation? Because we're used today to just swipe to the right and then we wait until we get a positive reaction and we get this reaction through our smartphones, then we read in, meet in real life. So that's how it is today. Or we keep using the same toothpaste, like years over years, I do as well, because what worked, that worked. And why should we change it then? 
but challenge your creativity. Creativity has no rules. It doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter what kind of job you have, it doesn't matter if you like it or dislike it, or somebody else likes it or dislikes it, it doesn't matter how, many, how much money you have or what you've already achieved. Creativity has no rules. And that's why, why it's so great for us and why we should be much more creative in our everyday life and give ourselves the freedom to be creative. And we've proved that. Like, we've proved that the connection between social interaction and creativity is there and is a really great tool. I've co-founded a company with my friend David one and a half years ago. And we analyze trends and create event products out of them, like real event products out of them, to bring people actively together. And our first event product is called Art Night. So we are doing painting workshops in bars and restaurants. 25 people, around 25 people, come together in bars and restaurants, so you buy your ticket online, then you go there with a friend, alone, or with your partner, and then there's a local artist which guides you through the evening and shows you how to paint something on a plain canvas. And we really believe in creativity and art as a great tool to connect people, and it was years over years. And we started just in Berlin one and a half years ago, and we've grown now all over Germany, and we will hit Europe this year. So we see how important this is, and that people really like it and have fun. But what's really funny is that we've, we experience the same manners of human interaction in every single event. Like, it's the same all the time. So imagine, you book the ticket and you go there alone or with a friend. You come into the restaurant, and now there's your first challenge. So there are a lot of plain canvases built up next to each other, like really closely. So you have to choose a seat next to somebody you don't know. So people just walk in, and then they grab a drink first, and then they think, OK, now I have to choose a seat. Feels a little bit uncomfortable, but then they do. They don't say hello to each other, so it's really it doesn't really happen often that people really say hello to other strangers who also participate in this workshop. And then when they've took a seat, the artist starts to guide them around. So they start, the artist, they start to tell you how to make some colors, how to start your painting, how to do the first brush paint on your painting. And people also feel really uncomfortable about that. So a lot of people just ask, okay, artist, like, how do you mix with how many percentage of red and what kind of percentage of yellow do you mix exactly this orange? So they fear the unknown and they follow exactly every single step the artist tells them. And what then is really interesting is that we experience a change. After 10 to 15 minutes, people open up and they use some colors and they start and they stop following the artist and they just do and follow their flow. So once they realize that following their flow is not bad and nothing bad happens and they're starting to having fun, they feel much more relaxed and they really create nice paintings out of that. And also at the same time when they get more creative and more open-minded about it, they start to talk to each other. They really start to talk to each other. They talk about colors, they talk about their paintings, how did you mix that, and they start about talking and doing random conversation. Nobody of our participants, and you see they have different ages and different jobs, but nobody really talks about their jobs or about the problems they had, because they're so open-minded just to have some funny conversation, a nice evening, do something that relaxes your brain, which works effectively all the time and solution-oriented. And this is really nice. And this is an, an effect that shows us that's really great to bring creativity and social interaction together. And usually all the people who then finish their evening after work and painted something, they go home really happy. So now you may ask yourself, how can I use my creativity to increase social interaction in my daily life? And what I can say is, try to break with your daily routines and challenge your creativity. For example, call in sick and drive with a car to a place you've never been. Or, for example, make chocolate cake for dinner. 
Say more often yes instead of no. Or for example, on your way to work, just keep your smartphone in your pocket and talk to some strangers or even smile at some strangers and you will see incredible things will happen. But pursuing new ways of life is always about daring. And daring to live a creative life needs always one stipulation. And this is, we must lose the fear of being wrong and we should not forget to smile. Thank you. <laughs>